Hi, my name is Tim Schobel, and I'm a NetSuite consultant with Business Solution Partners. And today I'm going to be talking about uh, part two to my initial video for the setup of Intercompany. Today I'm going to be talking about actually processing Intercompany transactions using the advanced Intercompany journal entry and um, flagging amounts uh, on the uh, journal entry lines uh, for elimination based on the setup that we had established before. So in my last video, I talked about creating intercompany AR accounts and AP accounts and marking those to eliminate intercompany transactions, as well as creating elimination subsidiaries for each uh, node of children in a parent-child subsidiary hierarchy. And I also talked about creating intercompany customers and vendors to drive those intercompany uh, allocations. So we'll see now how that comes into play in an actual transaction. So to do that, we're going to create an advanced intercompany journal entry. So that's under transactions, financial, make advanced intercompany journal entries here. So this is the form for an advanced intercompany journal entry. I'm going to specify a date of 1120 here. And I'll pick my subsidiary, uh, one of which that I had uh, created the intercompany customers and vendors for earlier. So I'll create this for US one. And, and when I select that, we can see that that subsidiary defaults in here to the first line of the journal entry. Uh, the first line has to be the subsidiary specified in the header. If I try to select a different subsidiary and click add, I should get an error. The first line in the uh, advanced intercompany journal entry is restricted to the from subsidiary. So that is the subsidiary specified here in the header. So I'll change that back to US1. And I'm going to pick an expense account that I'm uh, backing an expense out of. So here I'll just select my account, filter this to expense type accounts. And we'll take uh, an advertising expense here. And in this case, I'm going to do a credit of $500. And then I will do a second line, US1. And this is going to be the intercompany receivables account, 1900. And if I tab to the right, we can see that amount uh, automatically populating in here on the debit column. And as I scroll over, I will select my intercompany entity here. So uh, you might recall from our previous video, uh, we're going to be tagging intercompany customers to the receivables lines and intercompany vendors to the payables lines. So here I'll do ICC, and we can see only the US2 option appearing here. So uh, we wouldn't obviously be tagging the intercompany customer for uh, US1. This would be US2, the other subsidiary. And we can see that this is already automatically flagged for elimination here. So this will be picked up when we go to uh, run eliminations during period close. So I'll click add, and then I will enter in my second pair of lines here. So then I can do US2. In this, I will uh, book to the intercompany payables, 2,900. And I'll tab over, this is 500. And I also need to make sure that I select my company vendor here, and this is going to be US1. Then I will do US2 and do my expense account and hit enter. Okay. So we can see what we're doing here. We're uh, backing this amount out of the expenses and booking it to the intercompany receivables here, and then out of the uh, second subsidiary. Um, booking this amount to the uh, company payables and uh, debiting the uh, expense account of that subsidiary. And we've got the intercompany customer tagged to the receivables line and the intercompany vendor tagged to the payables line. And both of these are flagged for elimination based on the uh, criteria specified on the account setup for each of these intercompany accounts. And as I look over to the right here, I can see that the do to do from subsidiaries are automatically populating here. So this is going to be due to, uh, or I'm sorry, this is the due from US2, and this is uh, due to US1. Okay. So 
if I save this, I'm not encountering any errors. Uh, part of the setup though, um, considering that we have intercompany receivables and payables accounts, we're gonna need these intercompany uh, entities set up. If I don't have them set up, I'll receive an error specifying that I need to have these specified on the lines. Okay, so you can just quickly edit it and add these in. So then if I go to run my balance sheet for this period, January, 2020, I can go to reports, financial balance sheet, and I already have that open in another tab. I'll refresh this and I'll look at those accounts. So here I can see I've got an amount here under the US one subsidiary and I have an amount uh, for the uh, intercompany receivables account. And I have an amount here on the intercompany payables for US2. Okay. And I want to uh, book these to the elimination subsidiary. Okay. So part of that is going to be running our period close checklist. So I'm going to go to set up accounting, manage accounting periods. And the expected behavior here is I should see this after I run the eliminations, I should see this 500 uh, you know, booked to the elimination subsidiary uh, for the intercompany receivables as well as for the intercompany payables. And we should see this net to zero. So if I go to my managed accounting periods and span uh, fiscal year 2020 and open up the period close checklist here, I can, uh, after I've completed all of my tasks as part of the period close checklist for locking AR, AP, and any other tasks that you might have as part of your account setup, I'll go to the task to eliminate intercompany transactions right here. And I can choose to then run intercompany eliminations and save. And I can now see that this is in progress under the status here, I'll just refresh this until I see it say complete. I can see now it is, com it is complete. I'll view that and I see I've got another journal entry that's been created. So I can see uh, I've, you know, there's been a couple of advanced intercompany journal entries captured here and we've created a uh, result record. This is gonna be my elimination journal entry. So I'll open that up in a new tab. So we can see here, this is the journal that's been approved for posting intercompany elimination. And we can see this is out of the elimination subsidiary for that United States node. So I can see that based on amounts uh, from other, uh, the other uh, inter advanced intercompany journal entries that have been created, and those are reflected here, journal uh, 443 and journal 440, I can see that uh, those amounts that were booked for the intercompany payables uh, and receivables are reflected here. So on our original advanced intercompany journal entry, um, I've got $500 in the intercompany in the debits column uh, on intercompany receivables, and I've got $500 in the credits column on intercompany payables. On the, and this is out of subsidiary US1. On the elimination subsidiary now, uh, on the elimination journal entry, I've got the opposite. I've got debiting that same amount in the intercompany payables and crediting that same amount in the intercompany receivables. So if I go back to my balance sheet, again, note uh, how this was before. So we've got the $500 here and we still see that $500 showing up in our total. Similarly down here, we see this 1,500, 1,000 was already booked because we ran the eliminations once already, but we still have some amount showing up over here. If I then refresh this, now that I've done the elimination, I can see that the intercompany receivables is totally cleared out. That 1,500 booked to US1 has uh, been uh, you know, reversed back out uh, in the elimination subsidiary, and this is netting to zero. And similarly, I've done that here on the intercompany payable side. I've got $1,500 here, 
minus $1,500 here on the elimination subsidiary, and uh, this should be netting out to zero. It's just reflecting an amount uh, booked to a different subsidiary as part of the current year evaluation here. But, uh, but for that, this should be netting out to zero. And that's really how the eliminations are going to work. So that's advanced intercompany journal entries and running eliminations.